welcome to Celebrity Chatter and Things That Matter with Elijah, and that's me. I'm interviewing Mark Byrne. He's done multiple movies such as uh, Bigfoot, mm -hmm. and I'm actually in the end of Blood and Breakfast is a movie we're filming today and tomorrow with me and my dad. And we're super excited to get start filming. Yeah. I'm excited to shout at people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, we're getting started tomorrow morning. And uh, we've shot a couple scenes already, a couple preliminary scenes. But these are the main scenes uh, this weekend. And we got one other weekend here. Uh, we've got Nancy Ann Ritter and Lisa Neal in the scenes with us. And uh, several other actors from the region. So we're really looking forward to it. What's your most like excited thing that you want to do that you want to get to tomorrow uh well i'm, I'm excited about uh the scene up in the attic which i won't go into detail yeah but, um yeah. that's probably going to be the goriest scene that we do but um all of the scenes really are kind of setting up to you know it's a horror whodunit so uh you don't know who is the there's a serial killer i will say that mm -hmm. and you don't know who it is and um of course everybody starts to suspect one person or another and uh People start to, you know, kind of pair off to, well, I don't trust this person, I don't trust that mm -hmm. person. So it's always fun to um, to kind of fool the audience, and, uh, and and then at the end, you find out who it is, and yeah. it might not be who you think, right? Like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, it's going to be fun, but Mike Byrne is director, writer, um, what else? Um, I'm one of the producers along with Mike Donna and Matt Burns were the, were the three producers. Um, I also do the editing, which I do under a surname. Um, and I've just found that when I first started doing this 20 years ago, that you either learn how to do it yourself or you pay somebody. So there wasn't money to pay somebody, so I learned how to do it. <laughs> the one thing I couldn't do was the music. We always had to get somebody else to do that because you, you don't want me doing the music. So. Um, but everything else uh, I just learned to do and I, I enjoyed doing all of it. So yep. it wasn't it wasn't like I hated editing or hated writing. It was all fun to me. So um, You know, I just really enjoy it. So it's a what's your favorite part of writing? I Think when you get over the hurdle when you when you start <laughs> writing there's always like There's some part of it that you are, are gray on you know, and you know, you know the beginning You know the ending maybe how to connect all that and when you when the light goes on and you're able to really make that connection and the whole script kind of works together, that's my favorite part. And that could come early or late, depending on on what kind of movie you're doing. What was your favorite part of directing? Oh, just the camaraderie. Uh, the mm -hmm. the funnest part of filming, I think, uh, of, of filmmaking is is when you're on set with the with the cast and the, the camaraderie of everyone, and you make friends through through uh, filmmaking. And I mean, we already have, and it's day one, and we haven't even filmed it. That's yet. right. And we're doing an interview right now. Yeah, and I think you know you you find that everybody has a common interest. We're we're all very similar. We all have different backgrounds, but we're all very similar. Um, I found that, that on the sets that, you know, everybody, you know, there's very few prima donnas, very few people that are, are trouble or hard to get along with. Most people are, are easygoing and, and, and enjoy, and they're not doing this, they're doing this because they enjoy it. And I think that comes through. So, yeah, that's my favorite part of directing is, is getting the group together and, and the synergy of all of us together is always a fun part. That's great. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions... <coughs> It's kind of hard to see. But <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't really think of anything else, so if you have a number. Well, I, before you do the number, I could tell everybody about the website, um, surreproductionspictures.com. And if you guys come on the website, we've designed it to be very easy. We have our movies listed, and we have links right there to where you can go watch it, the link to the trailer. The link to the movie and then there's if you want to read it there's a description so some people like to go through watch all the trailers and then they go okay I really like that movie and then they pick it other people want to read more about it they might want to go I have the IMDB link there so if you want to go on the IMDB page and see who's in the movie however you know however you guys choose movies yeah. I made it really easy so you don't have to hunt around for it you just go to the website pick what you want and get to watch it go to the website guys there you go <laughs> <laughs> absurdproductionspictures.com remember that I'll put it in the um, the, the captions. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That'd I'll be great. I'll tell him put the website in the captions. Yeah. Okay, you want me to pick a number? Oh uh, yeah, pick All a right, number. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. <laughs>
can tell you had that one planned. <laughs> if you were not an actor slash director, writer, whatever, what would you be doing for work right now? Um, that's a good question. I would be doing something with writing, I think. Um, or photography. That's the other thing I really enjoy. So the thing I really enjoy about filmmaking is it pulls so many pieces of art together. You have does, writing, yeah. you have acting, you have shooting, and, and you have locations. And so it really is a way to do all kinds of art. And then you have your poster, which is art. You know, yeah. So you, you really it's a really great way to bring all the arts in. And, and not leave anything out. And I think yeah. that's what I really like about it. I've never thought about it that way. I really like that. <laughs> but if, like you said, the poster, that I'm like, well, yeah. Because, you know, the fans out there, they're probably going to be like, I love this movie. I want to make some art about this. Yeah. And they make this wonderful thing, and they come and get it signed, and we're like, whoa, that's freaking awesome, dude. Yeah. And then we start getting into it more, other fans start getting into it more, and that's what creates a fan base, and that's how movies become famous. And yeah. And that's how actors become famous. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, do you have another number? 43. 43. Uh, what's something special that you received when you were little that you still think of today? Hmm. Something special that I received. <laughs> um, oh, well, I can think of something. I, ha I have, uh, there was a, a comic strip that came out in, I guess in the 60s, it was called Dick Tracy. It goes way back to the 40s. And um, I got, when I was a kid, I got a, it was called the Dick Tracy case book. It was a hardback book. Right. And so um, that uh, kind of is what led me into an interest in film noir. And the first feature film that I did was a black and white film noir. And I think if it wasn't for Dick Tracy, that which was kind of the first detective kind of thing that I discovered, um, I may have never gone down that path. And so wow. I, I think it was really cool. And then I created uh, my own characters called Thans and Hawker, and they were two, two cops. And I ended up playing okay. Clarence Stans in the movie, uh, the black and white movie that I shot, I ended up playing the character Clarence Stans, who was like the first character I ever created. So I can really wow. thank the Dick Tracy case book as yeah, being what thanks, got me Dick into Tracy. that. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching this. Mm -hmm. uh, another number. Okay. Um, Twenty-four. Twenty-four. <laughs> What's your most embarrassing memory? Oh wow! Oh, there's so many. Here we go. <laughs> That's what I can <laughs> talk about. Um. Oh, let me think of something. In uh, well. It, it's, it's not totally embarrassing, but it's a funny story. So okay. when we were shooting the black and white story, we were shooting out in a cemetery at night and we were supposed to be there. Oh, nice. And so we about halfway through the scene and, and, and I was facing where the, the cars came in. Or mm -hmm. So a car was coming down the street driving really slow and now okay. there's a stop sign there, but before everybody rode through and I told the guy, I said, oh, there's, a car, there's a car driving really slow. I think he's gonna pull in here. And we already had it planned what we were gonna do. Okay. And sure enough, he turned. So we grabbed all the equipment and we went underneath the bush. And so when the guy drove around, it was, he was doing a patrol. Mm -hmm. And you weren't supposed to be in there. It was after, <laughs> after dark, you were trespassing. Yeah. So he drove around, and we just kind of moved around the bush. So when he was up here, we were on the side of the bush. <laughs> and all the way around until he went out. And we went back, and he turned around and went back down the road. And we just set the camera back up and went back to shooting the scene. <laughs> wow. So you never got in trouble for that. No. And then wow. it's funny, when we shot there in the daytime, the groundskeeper... Mm -hmm. ask uh, what we were doing there what well, turned out that my grandfather and grandfather was buried in that cemetery oh. you know died years before I was ever born but I knew that and so I said well we have a relative uh, that's buried here and we were doing a, a ceremony we were all dressed in long coats and fedoras you know yeah. like in 1940s no one dresses like that the women were dressed in these you know these 1940s clothes. Oh, yeah, no yeah. one dresses like so he knew we weren't black and white. Yeah, and we had camera equipment. He knew we weren't out there to yeah. do that. But he said so we're doing a family video. Yeah. <laughs> so he just he just uh he just said you know Slide whatever. Down. He let it go. And it actually made me think of another funny story as we were on our last movie, which was a comedy, we were shooting uh, a scene the two actors were in the car and this guy starts slowing down and I was like, he's gonna probably ask us what we're doing. I said if he asks what you're doing, tell him we're doing a YouTube video. And if you tell him that, he'll drive away. And he pulled up. He goes, what are you guys doing? 
And he goes, oh, we're shooting a YouTube video. And his face just dropped. Like, that's all. And he just drove away. He didn't even say anything. He goes, oh, okay. He just drove away. And then we went back to shooting the movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say, the voice that you heard was uh, Mark Burns' wife. Donna. 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 Yeah. Donna Burns. Yeah. That was her favorite number, 24. Yeah, that's what I said. Another number, and he knew. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's your third number? Um, How about three? Three, okay. Is there another actor or actress you'd love to meet and why? Oh, wow. Um, A lot of the ones I'd like to meet are dead. Of the ones that are alive, I would love to meet somebody like uh, Jack Nicholson or Al Maybe Pacino yeah. or, or Robert De Niro. The ones that, um, I like the ones that were in kind of the crime movies, uh, and, and you know, just Jack Nicholson has done everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be really cool to meet one of those guys. Oh yeah, that'd be amazing. They would have some stories. They'd probably have some stories. Oh, I yeah. guarantee you they would have some yeah. stories. <laughs> I mean, they've lived a long time. And they've done so many different I, things. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Um, they've done some amazing movies. Robert De Niro, especially. Yeah. Um, and still today, doing, mm -hmm. doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if it was Robert De Niro or not, but The War with Grandpa. Oh, yeah, I think that was I him. I think, yeah, that yeah. was him. I love that movie. It was, it cracked me up because I was, I was still my grandfather. I mean, I, I never had problems with him, but I'm, I'm, I hang out with him a lot. Yeah. And he shows me all sorts of autographs, just like my dad. Right. Because he has, like, a whole bunch of autographs, so I feel like it goes from my grandfather, who has a bunch of autographs and knows all these movies. Yeah. It goes from my dad who has a bunch of old guys and knows all the movies to me. Yeah. Who has all these old guys. And you've got and a I great head start on everybody oh, else. Yeah. Some people aren't gonna figure it out for ten more years and you're already gonna be way ahead of them, right? <laughs> yeah. Like some some of my friends I'll say, like, um oh yeah, I I met this person and they're like, who's that? I'm like you don't know who that is? I mean, that's like Mark Byrne, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've met some fairly famous people. I've met Janet Lee from Psycho before she died. I, I met Stan Lee, who created all the Marvel really? characters before. You know, a lot of these folks have passed wow. on. Got her um, picture taken with Stan yeah, Lee. Yeah, and wow. then uh, Joe Simon, if you've ever heard of Simon and Kirby. No, um, I don't think so. Most people know who Jack Kirby is, but um, Joe, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby started a lot of the movie, a lot of the comic books. This was before this was before Stan Lee, even. Wow. Um, they hired Stan Lee, actually. Well, I think Joe, Joe Simon may have. But anyway, I met Joe Simon when he was in his 90s, and he was still going. These guys used to go up to New York, and they would sign autographs, and a lot of them would sign for free. Wow. And they, they were legends. That's nice. Just literally legends. Yeah. I met Al Feldstein, who, who created Mad, or, he, well, he didn't create it, but he... He took Mad from like episode 28 to the end, and he wrote like all the Tales from the Crypt and all the 1950s wow. horror movies. He wrote all those things. That guy wrote about a thousand scripts. Super nice guy. Don and I, um, we got married near where he lived, and we went out oh, to his nice. ranch, and we got to see all his pictures. He had all the pictures of all the famous artists, and just he could tell stories all day. Probably. And, and, just, and every one of them was amazing. When so, you met um, Stanley, how was how was that experience for you? Because that I, guy's like you said, legend. He he was in his eighties, and when he did us, we asked if we could do a selfie with him. He jumped out of the chair. I mean, wow. he literally just jumped out of the chair and put his arms around us. He couldn't have been any nicer. Wow. He was almost ninety years old. He had full faculties, and he had full. He could get up and walk. He could walk as fast as you could to the exit. And I'm like, man, I hope when I'm his age, I hope I'm like him. I hope mm -hmm. I can think. And walk. She got that attitude. Yeah, and he had and it. he had absolutely no ego. I mean, the guy the guy had every yeah. right in the world to have all the ego in the world. He created all these characters. Everybody knows he had no ego whatsoever. He wow. would sit there and talk to you like you were just another. And I found that a lot of the really really big Janet Lee was like that. The bigger they are, the less ego they have. Now I know that's not always true, but um, just some of the ones you you kind of almost scared to talk to them. And they turn out they're just super nice like, people. Like, um, I met Matthew Lillard. Mm -hmm. He's a super nice guy. Like, he would turn around and give me a hug. And I'm like, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And he's he's my icon. Okay. I, I look up to him. When I'm acting, I'm thinking about him. And oh, how, good. How I should do stuff like more like his. Yeah. Because he's an amazing actor. Yeah, that's he good to have somebody to channel. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And... That's how I do most of the stuff. I look up to somebody who's really good at something that I'm really bad at. 
like, um, I can't think of anything right now, but, <laughs> um, like, I would just look at them, and I would keep practicing what they would do, yeah. and then I, I got it down, like, uh, my dad, he would tell me to practice my lines, and I'm like, hell yeah, yeah, mister, I've already seen the worst thing I've could have, I'm staying here, that's a line from the movie, like, yes. I already got this stuff down, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm excited to film this, though. Oh, we are, too. Can't mm -hmm. wait. It's going to be busy tomorrow. Yeah, going to be a busy day tomorrow. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, another number. Okay, how about number 100? That's the last one. 100, yep. If you could do it all over again, would you? Yes. Like life? Oh, what? Yeah, I yeah. would. I would. I, I, I might have started even earlier in movies than I did. Um, I... I as I said, I was bouncing around trying to figure out because I like doing art, I like writing, I like all photography, I like all these things. And it, and I always liked film, but I tried, what I first started to do was to write scripts and I thought I could sell them. So I actually went out as an actor and I was on the set of a movie called um, Runaway Bride. I was actually yeah. in the film. Oh, wow. I was in the second video, if you've ever seen it. And then okay. um, Contact with uh, uh, Jody, Foster. Jody Foster, but you can't see me. And then I was on a TV <laughs> show called Jag. Uh, where they shot down down DC in front of the Lincoln Memorial, and, and uh, me and the actress I was with, I said, "All right, I'm, I had a camera. We were supposed to be tourists." I said, "All right, I'm going to stop here, and let's look at the camera. Like we're something's wrong with it, and that way we'll make sure we're on on the frame." Mm -hmm. So we, but we never looked at the camera. But we just stopped and fiddled with the camera, and and you could see us on the camera. That's funny. Because That's most smart, of the movies, they they you can't see. The only time you could ever see me was on Jag and on Runaway Bride. All the other ones, and I was in one called Enemy of the State. And I was a, a cop in uniform, and I was in a car, and I was driving, and they said, well, we got too many cars, so they pulled me out. And because I was the newest one, they put me at the very front. Mm. And I was standing right behind, um, what's the guy that was in Midnight Cowboy? Um, John Voight. John Voight. And John Voight, actually, they tell you, never talk to the actors. Well, John Voight was running his lines by himself, and he was just kind of done, and he turned and started talking to us. He goes, oh, it's a nice day today. And, da, 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 you know? and uh, that was before they turned the rain machines on us. So we were in these slickers, and they oh. poured this rain. And I, anyway, I'm like, all right, I'm right behind John Boyd. They're going to see me. Well, in the movie, they blurred all of us out. So oh, all no. you saw was these black blobs. And it's like they put makeup on us and everything. And they put us in uniforms. It's like, why are you blurred? Why are you? I could have just worn black clothes. and you. you know? yeah. Hollywood spent more money in that one day than I've spent in my life on movies. It's crazy, the That's budgets crazy. they have. And what they do, they just throw the money away. The I, only know. problem with doing your life all over again is you won't make the same mistakes you made. That's right. Which is what you need to, to learn to be where you are yes. right now to make this movie. You need to make mistakes. Oh, absolutely. That's you you don't. Do you, if things go right, you don't learn anything because right. it all went right. You learn when things go wrong. You're like, well, I can't do that again. I can't do that. Yeah. And you learn, and it's so true. So yeah, you wouldn't want to start without all that stuff because you wouldn't be as good as mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I agree. That's why I, I I would, but. I mean, that's my opinion, but yeah. 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 All right, next number. All right, number one. Number one. What is one thing you can't live without? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had that coming. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I would like to. Yeah, that's, that's tough to get up in the morning, so. I like decaf. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I like the coffee. I like the creamer. Oh, that's, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I should say creamer. <laughs> if it was me, I can't live without video games. Okay. Okay. So specifically, I can't live without like probably Gran Turismo. Is that where you wreck the cars? Like, uh, that's um, it's like a real racing game. Oh. So I have the driving wheel that goes with it. Yeah. And the pedals. So whenever I play. Like, it feels like I'm driving in a car because, one, the game includes to feel like you're actually, like, driving wow. a car, like, with the grip. Uh, if you turn too much, you'll just, like, lose control. If you have to slow down in your turns or you're done, um, you have to, you know, do everything like you're actually driving a car. And the... Driving wheel and pedals just make it way better. Oh, that's so much fun. See, that's yeah. why I don't have video games, because I wouldn't be making movies. I'd be too busy doing that, because that's that's, that's fun. I would love to do that. <laughs> well, you already have a car. Oh, that's true. Right? I can drive my own car. I don't have to. <laughs> I would rent out a track. Yeah. Just... 
Oh no, I, I love work. racing, so yeah. yeah, I would be I would be totally That'd into be awesome. that. Yeah. But uh, Need for Speed, Gran Turismo, um, <coughs> uh, what else? I'm trying to think. Uh, other Grand Theft like, Auto. Grand Theft Auto. I wish I could play that. My parents don't let me. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That one's a little rough. <laughs> yeah. I told him you can watch me while I play it. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> That's all the ones I can't think of, but uh, I really like shooting games. Too. Those are fun too. Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Fortnite. I like Fortnite. No, I, you and I like the same ones. The the combat ones and the racing ones. Right there. I would play it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be downstairs writing, or editing. Yeah. Somebody's got to do that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. When you edit, what's like the least, like the worst part about doing it? Um, the worst part is when you can't correct something. You know, sometimes you'll you'll have something that's overexposed or underexposed, and you have to keep you know working to get that right. So um, You're out of sync, out of sync. out of sync, like the audio and the video. Oh yeah, yeah. well that that happened actually with um, that that movie I told you about. I actually learned more from that first movie I did, Taste of Desperation. It took me from from the start of of writing the script to the very end. It took six years to do. Wow. Because I had to learn the equipment, I had to learn the editing prop thing, and I had the entire movie done, and the audio sync was out of sync. And so I resynced it, and then five minutes later it was out of So I had to resync it every five minutes for an hour and 43 minutes. Because the, for some, I still don't know what happened, but some, and all my files were out of sync. I went back and found old files, and I said, well, I'll just go and use the old file and pull the audio in. No, it was all out of sync. I still don't know how it happened. Yeah. It's never happened again. But that was a nightmare. But I then learned how to sync stuff, right? Yeah, wait, so there we go. Yeah, mistakes. Yeah, we made, we mistakes made plenty of mistakes in that movie and learned a ton of stuff about it. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, I want to pick one. Okay. Uh, I like. I've always liked number eleven. <coughs> Did you ever get sent to the principal's office? If so, why? Did I get sent to the principal? <laughs> um, I think one time I did because um, there was a kid in my class who wrote "Disco Sucks" on the wall. And I agree with them because I think it does suck, but I didn't write it. And so the prince, they came, uh, the, the, um, the shop, it was shop class. So the shop teacher said, um, the other guy wasn't there. <laughs> so they sent me up. And so I was just sitting there and, and him and him and the guy both look at me and they go, we know you didn't do it. And, uh, did so-and-so do it? And I said, I didn't see him do it. And I didn't. And he, t he showed it to me, but I didn't see him do it. I said, I didn't see him do that. I can't, I can't say that. Yeah. And we just sat there in silence for a while. And then I said, can I go finish my lunch now? Because mm -hmm. they picked me up for my lunch when I was eating. Yeah. And they were like, all right, well, he's not going to narc his friend out. So then, but they were out to get that guy. And one day, um, he, he went and stood right in front of the, the office and lit a cigarette. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, wow. And he was just like, if you're going to get me for something, get me. And he smoked the whole cigarette and stood in front of the office and nobody ever saw him. And then he just walked, and I think he just walked out the door, and he just basically quit school. Wow. Yeah, so he was not, uh, he he's, was not a role model. <laughs> he's one crazy person. I yeah, yeah. yeah. His was parents it? had a lot of money, so I think he, could, he oh. felt like he could do whatever yep, he wanted. Yeah, there's the answer. That's yeah. why he did that. That's, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you have a number? Um, <coughs> six. 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 Yeah, number six. Uh, what's one of your bucket list items that you still need to check off? <laughs> um, okay, in terms of traveling, I'd love to go to Yosemite um, in California. Um, it's, it's like the big national park in America. I've never been to any Yellowstone, and okay. Glacier, and uh, Grand, uh, Grand Canyon. Smoky. And, sm yeah, so I, that's the one big national park that I've never been to. Um, in terms of other bucket list things, uh, I think of something regarding filmmaking. Um... There were several people I wanted to work with that we were ever, never able to get to work with, and, and they've all passed on now. Okay. So I wasn't able to do that. But we have been able, We, uh, in fact, uh, this is something I did do. We worked uh, on a movie we did two movies ago called Brazen Impact. We got to work with an actor from Dark Shadows, which was uh, a, a, movie, a TV show I liked when I was a kid. It was about a, a vampire and family and okay. all that. So I worked with uh, the vampire's little sister. She was like his kryptonite because he felt guilty that she died, she got this illness and died when she was young and he always okay. felt guilty. So when she she came back, she could stop him from attacking people because if he saw her, he couldn't. 
he, he, he was like Superman with kryptonite. You know, he yeah. couldn't he couldn't attack anybody because he was like he felt so guilty for his sister dying. He blamed himself for it. So we got to work with her, and that was really cool. Yeah, so, I mean, you said you like love your show growing up. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Th- that's a big thing working with a. Uh, basically an icon yeah. from your childhood. Yeah. When, and now you're working with her. It must have been great. Yeah, it was really good because, you know, a lot of times it doesn't work out. You know, a lot of times it doesn't work out to get these folks. Mm-hmm. But that time it did. And so it was really, that was really cool. Like uh, this movie, working with Nancy yeah. and Scream being one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I'm like... That's awesome. Yeah, and you're that's, gonna get to be in scenes with her. Too. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's always a huge thing. And, and, and like in the, the scene I was telling you about with uh, with that actress, I wrote since I wrote it, I wrote my character in to have a scene with her. Yeah. So you know, it's the same kind of thing. You know, I want to be in the scene. That's the thing with about writing. When you cast people, you can do whatever you want. That's right. You could just be like. You there, you there. And I don't put myself in with all of the people. Like some, sometimes oh, yeah. uh, there were there were a couple of them. We had our, our pretty other producer Matt. Uh, you know, he really liked one of the celebrities. And I wrote a scene for him, and I wasn't in it. I put him in. Yeah. And I put Donna in a couple scenes with a couple of the uh, the actors. So you know, I don't want to hog them all for me. Well, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we worked with Lana Wood, who was in uh, James Bond. She was in uh, uh, Diamonds Are Forever with Sean Connery, the original James Bond, and she was uh, Natalie Wood's sister. Okay. Um, who's more famous than her? But anyway, she people know her a Bond girl, so she's probably the most famous person that we work with because everybody knows who James Bond is. Yeah, of so. course. Yeah, and we'll do one more question. Okay. And you don't have to answer it, but who's your celebrity crush? Oh boy. Um. Hmm. I mean, it, it's different ones at different times. I mean, don't when, overthink it. When when <laughs> uh, when Courtney Cox was at her prime, I thought she was. I would, I would have said her probably not not so much now, um, I, you know when you look back in history at, at some of the ones uh, some of the you know, really glamorous movie stars from different eras even though they were a lot of them were dead before I was born but still you know you look at them and go wow they're, they're, you just nobody looks like that now you know so I I, I can't think of one in particular. Um, I, is there anybody that well, I'm Well, I'm trying to think about because we did this one time we were playing with this thing. We each get to have one celebrity crush, you know? Right. And who's yours? And it was, um, I, you know, I'm trying to think. Um, it, it's somebody who's still alive. It should be somebody who's still yeah. alive, you know? Yeah, I'm having a hard time com- coming up with one. <laughs> Blonde hair or brown hair? Probably dark hair. Um, I'll just say Courtney Cox since she Courtney was in the Cox, movie yeah. that you love, and and uh, and and she was really good when she was in the first screen. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll say her. Okay. Well, thanks for the interview. That was amazing. I had a lot of fun. Oh, cool! I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to work with you tomorrow. I hope you guys um will come out, check out the website, and yeah, check it check out. Check out the movies. We'll, yeah. We're going to be posting a bunch of uh, photos of all the actors, and uh, uh, we've got uh, or another round of actors that we're going to introduce uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, some more celebrities I can't say right now, but they're going to be people that you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, it's it's going to be really exciting. Got a lot of good people in this movie. Oh yeah, and drop a like if you're excited for this movie, and subscribe anyway, and follow and stuff. Cool. And yeah, thanks. Cool. Thanks, guys.